Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I am going to try to send crew up to our space station to fulfill the first space station contract. We need to send two crew and they need to hang out there for 30 days and then come back. It is a very lucrative contract and failure is not an option if we want to keep our budget. So uh, we'll get to it and then if we manage to get it done I'm going to prepare some Kerbal Rescues because we have a lot of Kerbal Rescue contracts available and we could always do with some more Kerbals anyway. So yeah, that is the plan and let's get to the launch of our crew capsule which has already been built and hope everything goes well. So picking which Kerbals we are going to send up, we see that we have eight Kerbals here so we certainly could do with some more. So some Kerbal Rescuing could be in order. Let's I don't know if it'd be, wow, I don't know how Lodbin got five points, but <laughs> what did Lodbin do to get five points? I have no idea. A Valentina is sorely lacking in in rank here. Yeah, I think compared to some of the rescuees mainly, but uh, yeah, we'll send Valentina and Bill. I think that would be best. We only need to send two. Okay, so launch. I can't believe they are so low ranked. But maybe, I mean, Valentina must have gone into lower orbit already, so maybe that's because we didn't risk Valentina on a moon mission or something. We should do that. But we have lost Jeb in this series, so, you know, we've been cautious about some of our Kerbals. It's wiggling. <laughs> that's not great. It has launch clamps and everything. Okay, so of course we have to line up with our target. Okay, that's within tolerances. All right, ignition. We have six engines, go. Oh, there's uh, leftover from our previous launch. We gotta watch out for that. Because we had recovered capsule. When we recover the capsule, it keeps the smart ASS settings that we had on the previous launch. Okay, booster set. Off those go. Let me check the timing of our upper stage. We need seven minutes. But we should have plenty of Delta B. Okay, that is the first stage. Separation and ignition. And launch escape system separation. And we're good. These are the engine two vacuums. And we probably need some pitch. So for the Kerbal Rescues, the catch is that these, this particular, it has a crew hatch, but this particular pod, when it has the shell on, they can't get through that shell in order to get to the crew hatch. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. So, what I'm thinking is we're going to have an airlock tucked in here. I've seen some images of them thinking about doing this with Dragon and all, and there have been other variations of this, like with Apollo. Uh, I think during the Apollo Soyuz test project, they had sort of an adapter. Uh, same idea. We'll have a little module that's an airlock that we'll dispose of. And it'll be costly, but maybe that's the best way of getting people in. We'll have to make sure that it's worthwhile, though. There are a few around the Earth and a few around the Moon. We'll have to work on budgeting for these Kerbal Rescues. I think I should make the... I mean, in a way, you know, originally the Kerbal Rescue contracts were disabled in RP0, the old career mode that I'm basing the contracts on. And I've re-enabled them because I think they're fun. <laughs> but. Uh, maybe I should up the value of them, because they are a little bit tight on what they offer, considering the difficulty of them. I'm, I'm sure they weren't originally balanced for RP0, because they just disabled them. 
Okay, we are doing very well here. Time to apoapsis this is being managed. We'll get to a lower orbit because we obviously have to phase with the station and everything. Oh, okay, well, we should have deorbited that thing. Anyway, uh, we have so many things already. We need to clean up that debris. All right, separation. Hopefully that knocked it just a little bit suborbital, just a little bit. Oh, we can't get any information on it now. Oh, well. Okay. Anyway, this is in orbit. Okay, so now we wait. Power is balanced. We've already activated the pods RCS, I guess. Oh, that was probably because it was already on before. We really don't want that on right now. We might. It depends on how hard it is to dock with the thrusters down here. Since they're sort of barely poking out at an angle. That's probably going to be alright. If it turns out that they're not very good at slowing us down, we might need the pods thrusters again. But it's best to reserve that fuel, which is different from the fuel in the service module for the actual descent. Okay, matching speeds with the target. Oh, we're a little bit late, actually. We want to dock on that port. Unfortunately, it's not an inline with the station access port, but, you know, can't have everything. We've got the big quest airlock on the side there. And again, the Lynx module and also the station airlock and the station node that we have here, these are part of the crew vessels pack. They are optional, technically, for RP2000, but probably a good idea. I put it together specifically because I felt that the existing stuff was inadequate. But you could technically use the hitchhiker storage container for this and uh, the pods that come with Kerbal. Yeah, it's a little bit bad on the RCS orientation, but I think we'll be alright without turning on the pod ones. Okay, we are docked. Let's turn off the RCS. Power seems fine for now. And is it counting? It is counting down. Now we have to wait 30 days. It's got everything else check marked except for the time and the returning home landing or splashdown bit. So that seems fine. I'm gonna try the tracking station and check on the contract. I hope it doesn't mess anything up. There's all sorts of possibilities for glitches with contracts after all. Okay, let's see. It seems to still be counting down, so we'll pay attention to it. We're at February 6th, so we are expecting March 8th-ish. We could spend a little bit more time. We'll keep an eye on the life support, though. But that should be all right. Plenty of margin there. Okay. Well, we'll head over to it before it finishes counting down. Okay, 28 more minutes. Okay, yeah, well, it's uh, done that part. That's just MMH and Mon3 there. The pod has all the supplies. We don't need to bring all the supplies back down. Maybe we should rebalance a little bit. That's pretty full, though. We haven't used much. We'll just put half of it into the station. Okay. That'll be better. And let us undock. We didn't actually send the Kerbals into the station officially. Uh, but, yeah. We just left them in the pod. But I'm sure they roamed around when we weren't looking. We are, in fact, carrying our waste and wastewater back down. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, this would not be a bad time to actually deorbit if we want to get back to. Oh well, yeah. Let's try a little bit better. Right now, our orbit is down here. We'll we'll hang out in orbit for a while so that 
we can get back to Cape Canaveral, or uh, closer to it. We'll wait until the Cape is over here. Let's get into a lower orbit just so that we don't... I can't imagine that we would actually bump into the station again, but, you know, I don't know. It's better to be safe. Okay, going down. Okay, I think on this next orbit we can try for uh, Atlantic Splashdown, but I'm not sure. Or maybe a Gulf Splashdown. Okay, 70 kilometers should do it. Okay, off. Off. I still haven't put the scent mode on this thing. I only remember when we're coming back down. I never remember when I'm not in the middle of a mission. Okay, we are passing over Florida right now. In fact, just south of the Cape, it's right there. Okay, we are through. Oh, uh, Bill is reaching G limit. Well, I guess that's why we have Val. But I think the, oh, the consciousness meter is getting a little bit rough. Come on, Bill, you can pull through. I mean, it's not, it's just blacking out or whatever, but still. I think Bill will just barely be okay with this. Okay. Need to get Bill some better training. Okay, the dreaded arrow cap separation. Okay, that was clean. I always worry though. They'll get caught on the docking port or something. And splash down. Alright. And once we stop bouncing, recover. And recover to VAB. Maybe we should retire this pod already. I don't know how many times we've actually used this one. We do keep recovering to VAB and potentially reusing them. Okay, uh, that didn't, didn't give us that much money. Let me see, contract is gone. How much was it worth? It seemed... I guess we got a lot of advance though. Oh, uh, it was uh, 525,000 advance. Completion was only 225. The only other milestone ones we have left are crewed Mars flyby and crew Venus flyby. Very lucrative, but we better be ready for it because it's, I mean, it'll give us maybe two chances. Uh, we should think about that, but maybe we need a few more Kerbals here and there. We still got one more shot at the repeatable human orbital around, or Kerbal orbital, around the moon contract. Though that only gives us a year, but it is the moon, but we should probably build the missions first. And then there's the rescue and recovery contracts. You can see we have 10 here. Now if we do the lunar orbital one, we could probably pick up some of these Kerbals. And there's one, two, I don't want to do the surface ones yet. One, two, three, four, five, six in orbit around the moon. Now they could be in weird orbits, so there's that to consider as well. But overall, if we could pick a few up, we should be in good shape. And these give us a lot of time to do them. So let me start off by just taking all of them. I mean, that's 20 years. It's amazing how they can survive in orbit around the moon for 20 years. But uh, yeah, I mean, why, why would we not? We've got room in our contract slots. Let me make sure it's the orbit one. There's less time for some reason. Five. That's a sig that was a significant one. Hmm. I wonder why. Orbit of the moon still. It doesn't pay more. It pays less. Oh, the others are exceptional, right? Okay. That was actually less complicated somehow. That leaves us only one free, and that one free one will be the the human orbital one here. So we are going to try this. We can't pick all of them up at once. We don't have pods like that, but we'll see how many we can pick up and come back with. Okay, so I brought in a Lynx S2 that we had sitting around back into the VAB. This is not the same pod that we just recovered. That was the Lynx Leo. So there's another one. We basically have two in service right now. 
And so we have rebuilt this. I put new parachutes on. Let me always double check that you actually did put the new parachutes on. Yeah, I took the old ones off and we've got a new heat shield. But the difference is now we have a lander can here. And yes, I added a decoupler down here to make sure that we could get it off of that. And so this will flip around and dock to that, take it off, and then that will serve as our airlock. And it's just a Mark 1 lander can, normal one, just one crew capacity because that's lighter than the the advanced one and we don't need more crew capacity because they wouldn't be able to come back home anyway if we picked them up and left them in there so yeah that is right there and to compensate for the extra mass it's only a little bit of extra mass I didn't increase the size of the service module here I think it'll have enough it's got 2174 right now of course it'll have less when carrying that can but that should be enough to do something around the moon I don't know how much we'll have to see and at least get one of them done I don't know but we have also compensated by increasing the utilization on this stage and the upper stage as well so we're at 91 percent utilization here let's say common bulkhead tanks or something uh, because the dry mass of this is pretty heavy you can see it's nearly 10 percent of the stage I mean it's a very heavy stage because it's hydrolox again but still when you think about it the shuttle like well, we can't really compare to the shuttle because of the way it bears load. I wish everything was like the shuttle external tank. But yeah, the shuttle external tank is much heavier overall, but has the less dry mass. Uh, but yeah, anyway, it's a heavy stage, so I've justified increasing utilization here. And also increasing utilization here as well. So that helps as far as keeping us below 800 tons while still delivering the Delta V that we need. So... Hopefully that'll all work out. We've only got 20 layers of MLI here. I don't know if we want more of that. We could sneak a few more. Let's go with 50. I don't know whether it can help. I think it'll probably be done and won't be able to help with capture or anything, but you never know if we can bring it all the way over. Okay, so I'm gonna save that. I hope that we have enough RCS down here to keep it stable. Um, I mean, that seems like a lot. I think that'll be enough to keep it stable while we grab the lander, right? But there's no controller on here. Well, the lander has a controller. But maybe we should put an antenna? Hmm. That is a good question. I guess we'll put two antennae down here, just in case. So that we can, we'll just put it on them like that. So that we can communicate with it after burn while we're trying to grab the lander. Okay, still under 800 tons because that's our pad limit. And I'm gonna save that and we will save edits. Though so we really need to cut down on the build time, so we'll spend some of the money that we just got to get some more upgrade points. That's 16 build points. Let's see, what does that give us? Let's try and get below 200 days. Okay, we are now below 200 days on building the links, so we can build a moon-capable crude launcher in 200 days. That would be good. Well, as long as we're reusing the pod, so that's a catch. I hope it didn't charge us full price and correctly accounts for the fact that we're reusing the pod. Anyway. We will time warp through that and get on with that mission, or at least launching it. I don't know if we can do all the rescues today, but we'll see. This lot bin rescue, actually, that might be a third link spot. No, I think that was, uh, we actually used the Mark 1 command pod, the stock one. Yeah. All right, time warping. Okay, I have finished building one, and we've got another one under construction. Uh, interesting that it seems like the build time was the same even though this one was using an existing capsule so I don't really know how that all shakes up as far as the build times and whether it's properly taking into account that we recovered those. Maybe I should just recover the money and build new ones I'm not sure but anyway so we're down on our money but on these recovery contracts rescue contracts we uh, get a lot of money for completion so rolling out
I think we will send one person with the pod, just for safety's sake, because we might lose communication or something. And I don't know if it's got Delta V enough to rescue two people or more. So we'll try, to, I mean, uh, if, more than two people, I mean. Uh, so we'll just try to rescue two at a time. Okay. And there's still, well, I think we should send Valentina. Valentina will be our one. She needs more points. So, okay, launch. Please, game, don't kill Valentina. There's still a lot of randomness as far as engine failures and such. We've got redundancy, but things can still happen. Oh, we've got to dump the waste and waste water from the pod from before. Now, we are topped off on the supplies, at least. Wonder. I hope we have enough food, water, and oxygen for everyone. I forget if this was modified somehow. Well, launching just at dawn. And throttle up. SAS on. Ignition. And launch. Alright. Our moon rocket is a go. And this is all still set up for the previous time. We don't need to worry about roll or anything like that. Jeez. Let me check on the supplies. 20 days. That's a little hard to... Well, I mean, it should be alright. It should be alright. But it's a little bit tight for three people. We just need to, them to have enough on the way back, but still. And the trip back could be four days. So... Just barely enough kind of thing. This pod was apparently not outfitted properly for three people to the moon. Okay, booster set. We are still going strong here. Uh, some of this is probably not in the right place. Okay. Staging. And ignition. Still not in the right place. Okay. Launch escape system jettison. We'll have to plan who to grab first, though. 2,200 meters per second right now, but we have to turn around and grab the Mark 1 lander can. It'll be less than that. We can dump the lander can eventually, but overall, we need to plan carefully if we want to manage to grab two of the Kerbals. As long as we get to, it should pay for the mission uh, with extra. I'll extend the comms here before I forget. Oh, it occurs to me to map. Uh, it occurs to me that the Mark One lander can probably is the type that can't be controlled without crew in. I should have added a separate controller, but that's too complicated. Uh, we'll just have to rely on this being steady when we shut down. Okay, and that's good enough. Alright, we certainly have enough Delta V to transfer over to the moon. And the question is whether I do the transposition and docking now or after translunar injection. I guess we'll do the translunar injection first. Okay, where exactly do we want to go for the first pickup? We see a lot of pods, but we need to know who to... Dunbulls, Fabian, uh, Melny, Tantop, and Tom Pond. Some of these are old ones, but there's Dunbulls and Tom Pond. Well, we'll probably need to capture down low first. We should try and get one of the low ones and one of the high ones, just to start off. So we'll say Tom Pond, and then... But maybe we want to end up low to escape. It's tough to say. We'll probably do a mid-course adjustment to close that gap there. It should be possible, but for now we can deal with the current approach. Okay, ignition for the moon. Okay, and shut down. Oop, pretty close. 
Um, not quite, but pretty close. Let's see what it's actually doing. Okay, well now. We're leaving this on kill rotation, but I don't know if it's actually going to do what it's supposed to do. I really hope it doesn't start spinning around when we separate. But time for transposition and docking. So let me check that that is the right one. Yep. Okay, we're good so far. And control from here. Set as target. Oh, uh, that side is turning, I think. Do we have any control over it? I think we do. Okay, we still have control over this, so it didn't require a crew in there. Okay, well, that can make things handier. Alright. Okay. Grabbing our makeshift airlock. And actually, we can still hang on to the stage. It can still help us do a little bit of stuff, maybe in the mid-course adjustment. Let me plot that. Uh, was it... Dumbles is one option. We'll go for Dumbles then. Okay, there's still some inclination difference, but we'll try and do this maneuver at least. Uh, I'll attempt to briefly fire the engines, but it's like one second we'll do here. Okay, well, that'll help. The RCS was taking too long for sure. Okay, I think we're looking good enough. Alright, on to the moon. Yep, okay, so that'll be the initial capture burn. Oh, we, we can't take that long though. I don't want to take too much food, water, and oxygen, so... We'll uh, bring it down a little bit more than that. We'll still use this stage to do part of the initial capture burn. That'll save us some. Yeah, well, it's taking a while to settle the fuel down. Well, there's like record amounts of time to settle the fuel down. Okay, well, it's finally settled. All right, ignition. But yeah, that's a bit weird. And capture. All right. Well, now we have to be careful. First, decouple. Then control from here, which should be opposite. But actually, kill rotation. I don't want to risk the solar panels bumping into the stage. All right. So we have nine, uh, 1,946 with the Mark One lander can. That's not too bad. Okay, now point at the node, please. We have not technically captured yet that apoapsis is higher than the SOI of the moon. Okay. Ignition. Now we're captured, right about there. So again, we've got the outer rescue mission being built, but it'll take a little bit of time. If we can do that one automated, that might be nice so that we... But we still have to do the human orbital repeater mission. So we probably have to send another Kerbal out anyway to do that. Looks like we're doing the rescues two at a time. Right, well, that's what we have planned, but we will do that next time. We will see how the rescues go, and hopefully everything will go well. We have to reserve at least 800 meters per second to get back, probably more. So after this and the rendezvous burn there, that combined will cost about 600. That doesn't leave us a whole lot to grab somebody else right now. So this whole business... I mean, probably we wouldn't be able to get to three different Kerbals anyway. It was all very optimistic. We may need to upgrade the launch pad finally instead of having the 800 ton restriction. That could help. But anyway, we will leave Valentina here with the awkward portrait position. And we will see how things work in the next video. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.